Today we'll look at the Heathkit GR78 general coverage receiver. We'll look at the history of the radio, its features, and take a look at it inside and out. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and demonstrate it being operated. Heathkit was a famous manufacturer of electronics in kit form. A large part of their product line was shortwave and amateur radio equipment. At any given time, Heathkit typically offered several shortwave receivers at different price ranges. In this 1971 catalog, Heathkit was selling the GR78 for $129.95. Their other shortwave radio offerings in the catalog started with the GR81 regenerative receiver for $29.95 and included the GR64 for $42.50, GR54 at $89.95, and the high-end SB310 receiver for $259. Heathkit billed this as a general coverage receiver, referring to the fact that it provided continuous coverage over a range of frequencies. It was designed to be a replacement for their older Mohican receiver, which I covered in another YouTube video, and was sold from 1969 to 1976, initially at a retail price of $141.95 which would be equivalent to about $875 in today's currency. The GR78 is an all-solid-state portable superhet radio receiver. It weighs in at about 10 pounds and covers the following frequencies in six bands. Band A, 190 to 410 kilohertz, long wave. Band B, 550 to 1300 kilohertz, most of the AM broadcast band. Band C, 1.3 to 3 MHz, the high end of the AM band plus short wave. Band D, 3 to 7.5 MHz, short wave. Band E, 7.5 to 18 MHz, short wave. And band F, 18 to 20 MHz, short wave. The design uses 15 transistors, of which 5 are field effect transistors and 2 are germanium. 7 diodes and 4 ceramic IF filters. It uses a 455 kHz IF frequency. On band E, it's dual conversion with the first IF at 4.034 MHz and second at 455 kHz. It features a lighted slide rule dial with calibrated band spread, S meter, internal speaker and headphone jack. It has selectable automatic noise limiter and automatic volume control there's a built-in 500 kilohertz crystal calibrator. Audio output is 300 milliwatts and uses a transformerless audio output circuit. It can receive both AM and single sideband or CW signals and has a receive standby switch as well as a muting connection. There's an internal telescoping antenna and connectors for an external antenna. It can be powered from 120 volts AC 12 to 15 volts DC, for example, a car cigarette lighter, or internal rechargeable NICAD batteries. The AC and DC power actually trickle charges the NICAD batteries when the radio is powered off, so it can't operate without working batteries. With its carrying handle, internal antenna, and batteries, it could be used for portable operation. Like most Heath products, it was sold as a kit. The circuitry is contained on six printed circuit boards, four of which plug into a motherboard as well as some point-to-point -point wiring. It can be aligned with or without instruments. Let's take a look at the front panel. The large slide rule dial takes up most of the upper portion of the panel. The six bands are shown on separate scales. To the right is the signal strength meter which reads in standard S units from 0 to 5. At the left is the dial for band spread tuning. The way this works is you set the main tuning to a frequency listed on the right side of the band spread dial, say 7.5 MHz. Then you can fine tune using the band spread tuning knob over the frequencies read off of the band spread dial. In this example from 7 to 7.5 MHz. This makes tuning easier, particularly in the upper bands that cover a wide range of frequencies. Main tuning uses the large knob on the far right and band spread tuning on the far left. Next to the main tuning is the selector for one of the six bands A through F. Next to the band spread tuning is the on-off and audio gain 
and RF gain on concentric shafts. In the center are six switches. Light is a spring return switch which turns on the dial lamps. The next one switches between receive and standby modes for the receiver. The cal switch turns on the crystal calibrator. This produces a signal at every 500 kilohertz that you can use to check calibration of the tuning. The next switch selects between AM reception and CW or single sideband which allows receiving Morse code and single sideband voice transmissions. This uses a product detector circuit. The automatic volume control is next and finally the automatic noise limiter. At the top is the telescoping antenna which extends to about 30 inches. On the right side we have a carrying handle and on the left side is the grill for the internal speaker. On the rear panel at the top is the mute connection. This could be used with a transmit receiver relay to mute or disable the receiver when using a transmitter. For normal operation it needs to be jumpered as it is here. The 120 volt AC power connector is next. The power cord here is not original and was taken from another radio. Next to that is the 12 to 15 volt DC power connector. This radio came with the matching plug. At bottom right is a quarter inch mono headphone jack which disables the internal speaker when connected to headphones. Above that are antenna and ground screw terminals and above them an alternate BNC connector for the antenna. Looking inside from the top you can see the main circuit board and point to point wiring. Below the main receive board is another PCB with no components on it. As we'll see this is like a motherboard for the cards inserted into it underneath. At the bottom there is a cover which provides access to the coils and trimmer caps that are adjusted during alignment. There's a total of 38 adjustments here with a few more that are made on the main board. If aligning without instruments the pre-adjusted coils are left alone. Removing the shield you can see the four printed circuit boards that have sections of the band switch mounted on them. Heathkit called this their modular plug-in switch boards which reduce the amount of wiring at the cost of making it hard to access the circuitry when assembled. The plug-in boards are for antenna, RF amplifier, mixer, and oscillator. The main advantages of this radio were that it was relatively small for its time and could be operated portable with internal batteries and antenna. It covers all the major shortwave bands and offered a decent tuning rate with the band spread. Sensitivity and selectivity were pretty good. It also includes a number of features that were often missing or optional extras on lower cost receivers such as the crystal calibrator, speaker, dial lights and rechargeable battery. On the minus side it's a little large at 10 pounds. The NICAD batteries in these radios also had a limited life and after 40 years or so have all failed by this point. While the original battery pack is no longer obtainable, it can be replaced with uh, eight 1.2 volt AA size NICADs and suitable battery holders for example. Heathkit said that the radio was suitable as a backup receiver for amateur radio use. In practice it would be frustrating to use this for two-way ham radio communications due to the limited accuracy of the band spread dial. This particular unit was purchased on eBay from another Canadian seller. It was in pretty good physical and electrical shape. It was missing the power cord. It didn't include a manual but I was able to download a partial manual on the internet. The original NICAD batteries had been removed at some point and replaced with a wall wart type power supply. This allowed the radio to work on AC power without batteries, although it doesn't seem to provide enough current to light the dial lamps. With the NICADs removed, battery power is no longer available as an option. At some point I might buy some NICADs and restore the circuitry to the original circuit. The dial cord was strung backwards, so the main tuning knob turned the dial in the wrong direction. I corrected that. There were two versions of the band spread dial included in the kits, one for short wave bands and one for the ham bands. The builder could pick the one they wanted to install. I think I have the ham band version. 
I did a full alignment of the unit using an accurate signal generator. The original alignment was not too far off, but performance was a little better after the alignment. Let's listen to the radio on the air. Band A is long wave, and while at one time it was used for things like aviation, it's rarely used anymore, and not of much use, at least in North America. So we won't try that. Uh, band B covers most of the AM broadcast band. So we should be able to pick up a few of the local stations that are broadcasting here in Ottawa, Canada. Driving when you're worrying about your tires. So right now, grab a set of four premium Michelin Defender Facts, Mooseheads, and not going well so far in the first. Gatineau is trailing two to one late in the first period. The so mostly news, sports, and talk radio are all you find on AM these days. On shortwave, we should be able to pick up a number of stations this evening around the 49 meter broadcast band. So typically you can also hear some Morse code and single sideband voice ham radio stations on the 40 meter band. So this is pretty good considering we're only using the not fully extended internal antenna from a room in the basement. With the uh, crystal calibrator on and set to CW single sideband mode, you can hear a beat signal every 500 kilohertz on the dial. Let's give that a try. That concludes our review of the Heathkit GR78 general coverage receiver. For its time, it was one of Heathkit's higher-end shortwave receivers, second only to the SB310, which was more than double the cost. For the price, it was a good value and included a lot of desirable features. While not extremely rare, this model is not as common as some of the other Heathkit shortwave receivers. While primarily intended for shortwave listening, some hams did use this as their receiver, which would have been challenging but doable for someone starting out on a small budget. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.